Hi, my name is Daniel Lomas, and today I will be talking to you about the class Brachial Oda. Oda, sorry. And uh, this is a very diverse group which has the adaptations and capabilities to live in almost all aquatic environments on uh, the planet, as well as in space, as you will see later in this presentation. The class Brachial Oda is a crustacean, but it's very similarly related to the class Oda. Um, when we look later at the anatomy, it will become very obvious uh, how they are related as they share some of the same anatomical and physiological structures as that of the coconut uh, um, More specifically, the uh, class Brachiopoda is split into four living groups. This is the Anastraca, the Cladocera, the Conchostraca, and the Nodostraca. There is also two fossil groups um, attached to the class Brachiopoda, however it is still being investigated and argued whether they are a subphylum of the living groups present here or whether they are completely separate and involved in a separate phylogeny. Again, more specifically, uh, there is over 800 species of the class Brachiopoda, so you may be asking, with such a large species diversity, how are they able to classify all under this single class and the only four groups? Well, the answer is genetic research and investigation. They have been able to find uh, gene sequencing within the uh, genome of all, the different, all these different species which uh, relate them uh, closely enough to be placed under the class Brachiopoda. However, uh, gene sequencing is still being researched in the class Brachiopoda and we are still unfamiliar with the position of Notus uh, specifically in relation to labia cordata and how it is related, it is still being argued on its position in the phylogeny history. Um, again, before genetic uh, research and identification, it is very difficult to um, classify the uh, class Brachiopoda just by their anatomy. However, there is one similar trait um, that they do carry that is part of the reason why they have their name, Brachiopoda, and that is their gills. These uh, appendages are called phylopodus, and they are gills on the leg appendages of uh, all the species under the class Brachiopoda. Uh, this example here specifically is the tadpole shrimp, and uh, is one of the largest species of Brachiopoda, uh, reaching around 10 centimeters in length. And these uh, phylopodus are used for uh, multiple reasons, such as uh, feeding, locomotion, and uh, gas exchange. In this specific example, um, the tadpole shrimp is one of the only organisms that does not uh, solely rely on the phylopodus to gain nutrients from the water. It also is able to ingest food mechanically. In the same manner as the horseshoe crab, it is able to push food items such as polycube worms, or smaller worms, sorry, uh, into the central region of the body between the legs and push it into the mouth region where it is uh, cut up by mandibles on either side and put through a complete gut. Other uh, general characteristics of the anatomy which help classify uh, the um, branchiopods is very hard due to their large diversity from group to group. Uh, for example, in the uh, Cladocerans, we have a pair of compound eyes, but in different groups, uh, there is a singular eye on the top. Um, there, however, is a general body structure similarities, such as a fused thorax and abdomen, and very minimal uh, body tagnosis. They also uh, have a very simple digestive and nervous system, with some species vibrating their eyes in order to get more visual information. Reproduction in the Brachiopoda is very interesting as they are able to reproduce parthenogenically, which is to uh, reproduce by fertilizing an ovum without the fusion of a sperm and egg, and able to almost create a genetic copy of a female uh, Brachiopod, uh, which is very helpful in situations of low population density able to uh, quickly revitalize that population at the cost of uh, losing genetic diversity. 
However, they also are gonochoric animals and able to sexually reproduce, meaning that um, once population activities, uh, population levels have risen, risen they are able to counter this genetic, uh, this lack of genetic diversity by using sexual reproduction to again um, increase genetic diversity. Another uh, unique characteristic to them, or a unique characteristic to crustaceans, some of the families of crustacea, is the uh, lock and key um, composition between males and females. Uh, in this example, we have a female fairy shrimp and a male fairy shrimp, and he uses his second antennae to lock onto her a plexial pouch, um, which makes it very uh, selective in what species can breed with one another, another area of evolution and sexual selection. In terms of their ecology, um, due to their uh, ability to survive in very hospitable conditions as eggs, uh, such as uh, in the uh, boiling conditions or freezing conditions or even out in space, uh, they are able to survive in the most hospitable conditions as well as the most advantageous conditions here shown in the rice paddies of the Indo-Asian region and here in the temporary waters of California they're also able to survive in such things as salt lakes which is a very unhospitable environment again because of this uh, ability to have their eggs um, lay dormant until more advantageous conditions arise and the eggs are able to stay uh, viable even after being subjected to the most extreme conditions. Um, as mentioned before, there is four living groups, the Anastraca, or the fairy shrimp, the Nodostraca, or the tadpole shrimp, the Clarocerans, or the water fleas, and the Concostrata, uh, Conco or the clam shrimp. Uh, when looking specifically at the Anastraca, or the fairy shrimp, they have this unique characteristic of locomotion of being belly up. Uh, this is a characteristic only shown in the Anastraca and specifically in the super fairy shrimp. Uh, they also have a more elongated body than the rest of the groups and are able to do sort of very interesting things. For example, their uh, specific species, um, Branca, Branca, Branchinelli Thailand, Dennis, is of interest in agriculture because of their ability to rapidly reproduce and have high nutritional content, which makes them a very strong competitor to brine shrimp at the moment due to the uh, use in aquarists as a food source for small marine animals. The Nodostraca, or the tadpole shrimp, is given its name by its uh, body structure. It has a large head region with a slim down abdominal and lower end region. Um, these shrimp were interesting as they're quite a ecological and economical nuisance in parts of the world due to their ability to be uh, destructive when in large populations. For example, in uh, rice paddies in Indo-Asian areas, uh, they are known for destabilizing the sediment around rice paddies and causing the loss of young shoots due to um, collapse. This is uh, a huge issue due to um, rice being a staple carbohydrate in those areas of the world. The Clarocerans, or the water fleas, are unique in the way of their body structure as well. They have a uh, secreted shell um, around their entire body apart from their head region um, that looks almost bivalve in nature, but is actually just one shell folded in the center region. And they are also unique in their way of locomotion. The uh, Clitocerans, the water fleas, are given them in, in water fleas due to their uh, vigorous uh, stroking of their antennae, which causes a sort of hopping movement through the water, and also on more terrestrial, um, terrestrial environments, such as uh, on the mud, etc. Uh, the Concostrata are also very unique in their body structure. They actually are bivalvia with having two shells on each side to uh, give protection. These differ from the Cladocerans in the way that their body and head region is also protected by the shells, allowing them to close up and protect themselves more than that of the Cladocerans. 
They're also be able to flex these shells on both sides to propel them through the water and have a simple eye on top for uh, light regulated vision. Um, so, some questions. Oh, sorry. They are also exclusively freshwater um, compared to the other groups which have some marine species within them as well. So, some questions for you as the audience. Uh, what special traits of the eggs of certain? Sorry. What special traits do the eggs of certain brachiopods uh, have? A to survive in vacuum space. B to subject to freezing and still be viable. And C be subject to extreme heating and still be viable. Or D all of the above. Just give you guys a chance to answer those questions. And then a more long-winded question. Sorry. Of the four living groups represented. Do you believe there would be an economic value in terms of growing or harvesting them in an agricultural manner? And uh, explain why. And that's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening, and I hope it was uh, beneficial to you in some way. Thank you.